Hello, my name is Anna Klein and I'm a composer and welcome to my studio at my home in the Hudson Valley in upstate New York uh, where I live with my husband Jody and our dog Penny who is uh, my composing companion over there. Say hello Penny. So starting in the corner over here, I love plants in my working space. And this plant here I got about five years ago in a bodega in Brooklyn and it was about this big and it has just exploded. So it has its own uh, space over here. And it's next to my piano, which is where I always start composing. I'll sit and just noodle around until I find like a, a melody I like or some kind of chord progression I like. Um, I'll jot that down and then go over here to my computer and work in a program called Finale. And I have this fantastic external monitor, which is great for when I'm working on an orchestra score where there's lots of stuff. So um, at the moment I'm working on a saxophone concerto for British saxophonist Jess Gillam and it's quite a large, large orchestra. So as you can see, lots of stuff. It's great to be able to zoom in. Um, here on top of my piano, I keep a collection of books for any particular projects I'm working on. So for example, here is a collection of Emily Dickinson's poetry. Um, I've been writing quite a few pieces inspired by her work lately and also uh, dipping my toes into an opera inspired by her poetry. Um, so moving over here to my desk, um, perhaps to draw attention to a couple of photographs I have here of two other composers, Stravinsky in the corner and John Cage. And I love these two photos because they're listening very intently in two very different ways. Um, so I've traveled with those photos for many years, they've been with me. And this little painting here I picked up in a thrift shop in Brooklyn and, and it was really nice when I was living in the city when I wasn't in the countryside to have sort of glimpse into the, the countryside. So I have that near my writing desk too. So over here I have a couple of egg timers. When you're composing sometimes you know you lose focus or you get distracted. So I have here a, a five minute timer. Um, and a 30 minute timer. So if I'm stuck and I just need to focus, I'll put one of those on and just stay really focused for that period of time. So I find that can be really helpful. Um, what else? So here I have a pair of wireless headphones. When I'm writing, I like to, I have uh, speakers here, but I like to often put on headphones and get really lost in that world, really get the stereo effect of sound. So that's an important tool for me. Um, so Adding to my collection of plants, I have a peace lily here, which actually just a couple of weeks ago bloomed for the first time in a while. It's a beautiful uh, peace lily there. Um, down here, I get more books for projects that I'm working on at a given time. They're, most of these books are actually about birds and bird songs. I've been thinking a lot about bird songs and how it can be incorporated into musical compositions. So that's my latest um, interest. So a uh, mandolin here, which I used when I was writing a mandolin concerto. If I'm writing a piece for a soloist or a solo instrument, I like to get a sense of the physicality of the instrument. So that was really helpful there. Here we have some fresh snapdragons from our local market. In addition to getting local fruits and vegetables, they also have fresh cut flowers. And I love this time of year for snapdragons. And actually when I was in my 20s living in New York, I worked as a florist during the day. So. I've always loved working with flowers and I really love having them in, in my studio. So over here, some of my pastime pandemic hobbies, one of them was taking online drawing classes at the Art Students League in New York. And this was a sort of a beginner's class in drawing, um, really focusing on uh, pencil and some charcoal. And I found it really interesting because a lot of the parallels between drawing and composition, there are some crossovers. So. Um, there are sort of three steps to drawing this perspective. So in here we're getting the, the ratio and then there's the value, the black and white, like where it is on the gradient scale and then the edges, how they sort of bleed together. And I, th I thought that's very similar to composition, like getting the proportion and then gradually uh, getting the details within that framework. So really enjoyed that. Um, what else do we have? Well, here we have Penny, my uh, trusted companion. So she's uh, very, very relaxed most of the time and we adopted her during the pandemic too. So she's been a great addition to our home. Um, another pandemic pastime was learning the banjo. I actually took a bit of a hiatus over the winter, but now it's summer again. I want to get back on the deck and play it, um, playing old time uh, banjo music with the claw hammer style. And I, I really love that, it's very relaxing. And I've also taken some fiddle lessons with a good friend of mine. And he teaches both classical and folk, Irish folk fiddle music. So that was great. And then my cello, which is actually my, my main instrument. 
So yeah, we have dog treats here and then a collection of books. If I'm stuck with an idea or stuck with a piece, I'll dip into a, a poetry book, um, just try and get some ideas. Um, and they're bookended by my sewing machine, Singer sewing machines, which I collect. Actually, these also from Brooklyn, someone was throwing them away on a stoop, so I grabbed those. Um, yeah, and I guess the last thing here is my, my tap shoes, which is another pa uh, pandemic pastime. Underneath this rug is actually a DIY uh, tap floor. So if I'm in a, in, you know, getting in a rut with a composition, throw these on, listen to some Frank Sinatra, do some dancing, then come back with fresh ears. So this is my studio. It's been wonderful to get, give, show, you, show you around and I'll escort you back to the door. So thank you so much for visiting. Bye.